This is Irene Woods. I'm working on Tier 4 on the Mid-Gage Fair Isle Round Yoke Cardigan. I have already joined the fronts to the back along the yoke seam. There are enough needles in this case to get the entire yoke back on the bed in order to put Tier 4 on. And that's what I've done. I used method six for the fair aisle, and to do that, let's see if I can get the carriage over this way, I set the carriage so that both Russell levers are in the back position, and then I've brought forward the contrast needles, and that would be the purple ones in this case. I knitted one row with the white using the carriage. And then I went back and manually knitted the purple ones until I got to the last stitch. Now what we have here is a span of three white needles at the end. And I don't like to do that because when you come back, this yarn tends to make a funny little strand that comes across this way. And I don't like the effect of that. So what I frequently will do is bring out the end needle and then catch both yarns in it. Now this is going to make a thick stitch, but it really doesn't make much difference because that gets sewn into the seam. We began with every fourth needle as the contrast stitch. And now this time I'm going to make every other needle in contrast. But I'm going to skip the purple ones and bring out the white ones next to it. Begin in the middle of the bed, or at least approximately in the middle. It's easier for me to get started like that. And then work out to the edges. Now you can't see the left side of the bed, so I'm going to bring those needles out off camera. The white yarn is in the carriage, and both rustle levers are back. Now I'm going to manually knit the purple ones. And by manually knit, I just mean put the yarn in the needle hook and knit it back. You may find it easier to push these back about halfway, but be sure that the latches are open. And what I'm doing is pushing those needle butts until they're in line with the white um, stitches. You will need to stop and pull down yarn. because this takes a lot more than you expect it to. I'm going to finish this row off camera, then I'll be back. So first we bring out the needles. And again, I'm going to bring forward the purple needles. And this will be the same ones that we used last row. So it's easier for me to pull out a few to get started because you can look down in here and see those purple stitches quite well. And then use the needle pusher and complete this. Knit one row white. And I'm going to take those needles back halfway. It's easier for me to work if they are in position C. Do check every row to make sure everything has knitted off cleanly and that there are no drop stitches. And what I'm going to do now is push 
the purple needles back about halfway. It's just easier for me to work with them in that back position. And now I'm going to knit the purple needles. If a latch is closed, that's where you're more apt to drop a stitch. So do check to be sure the latch is open. And if it isn't, flip it up. This is the last row of white. And when I get to the end of the row, I'm going to cut the white. We're going to go into the neckband at this point. But before we do, I'm going to remove it on waste yarn and then rehang it, putting the decreases on. I'm getting ready to put the neckband on the mid gauge Fair Isle round yoke cardigan. This is actually the last three rows of pattern from tier one. It starts, there's a one contrast color here every fourth stitch and then every other stitch becomes contrast color here. I then knitted one row of that dark main color and removed everything on waste yarn and that's this little bit of blue that you're seeing right in here. That's actually waste yarn and it is below these stitches. I know it doesn't look like it but it is. I'm going to knit the stitches now in stockinette that will be neckband, and after they're knitted, I will be converting them to ribbing. I'm going to use a technique called tension control shaping, and that means that I start knitting the first row at the main tension of the garment, knit two or three rows, turn it down one click, which is the dot between numbers on an LK150, and knit another two or three rows and so on. The, there will be a total of eight rows in the outside of the band and eight rows on the inside of the band. So I'm tightening the tension until I get to row count eight and then I'm loosening the tension until I get back to row count 16. And when I get that done I will be back. I have completed the stockinette. That's this section right here. And I'm ready to begin the ribbing. Do not remove the waste yarn. It acts as a break. The waste yarn prevents that drop stitch from running down into the yoke. So if that should happen and you cannot repair the drop stitch or if you drop too many, you'll just simply have to remove this whole section from the bed, pull it back to the waste yarn and put it back on the machine, which is irritating, but at least you don't lose the whole yoke. Okay, I'm going to use one by one ribbing. You can certainly use whatever you like. What I have found works best for me is to begin dropping stitches and latching them back up on the third stitch from the edge. That puts two knit stitches on the outside edges. And it's easier for me to get the front bands on when I have a knit stitch to work from rather than a purl stitch. So I'm going to start dropping from this one. I'm going to do that off camera because you've seen me make ribbing several times. I have completed dropping and relatching all of the ribbing. And now I'm going to hang a hem. What I'm looking for is the first row of main color just above these blue stitches. These first ones on the edge can be a little bit tricky. I'm going to put that on the second needle in. I'm skipping every other stitch. I think it makes a slightly more elastic neck bend if you only pick up every other one. I'm 
basically what I'm doing is getting the stitch, the purl bump that's between the two knit stitches, knit stitches as they face you. I'm going to do this all the way across, pick up all of these purl bumps, and then I'll be back. I have all of the neckband hung on the needles. Now I'm going to knit one row from right to left and I need to reposition the camera. The section of the clip that showed binding off with the back stitch method was so dark that you could not see what was happening. So I have trimmed that little section out and instead we're going to do just this one brief little tutorial on backstitch. What I normally do is cut the yarn three times the width of the working needles. On a larger section such as we were working on in the video, three times across the needle is usually plenty. You can do this from either the right or the left, it does not matter. But what we're going to do, insert the needle from back to front through that first stitch. That locks that edge stitch. Now, take the needle from front to back through the second stitch and then back up through the first. Pull your thread through. Skip one needle to the right. Pass the needle through that stitch front to back and then up through Skip one more needle to the right. You're actually going through every live stitch twice. Once from back to front, once from front to back. This makes a fairly flat seam. I do use it a lot on neck bands because of that. And it's also very strong. Because as you see, we're going through each stitch twice. Now, you may find as you go across, particularly when you're dealing with a whole garment, that in time you won't be able to reach far enough across the fabric to be able to pinch it. And when that happens, just release a few stitches. I would always try to keep at least two stitches, these two, past the ones that were just in work. In other words, this one is going to be worked through one more time, but then you would have three more beside it. And that helps anchor those stitches so that they don't stretch out quite so much. I wouldn't have had to do that on this narrow piece because I can get my hand around all of it. But when I was working on the yoke, I couldn't. That uh, The yoke was just too much fabric to deal with.
It looks like this time I could have, have quite a bit gotten left by with just taking the yarn across the working needles three times. What I don't want to do ever, if at all possible, is to cut the yarn so short that I run out part way across this seam because then you have to begin again with another yarn, another strand of yarn. And it, you can do that, it works, but it's just a thing I don't like, so that's my preference. I've now reached the end of the back stitching. I'm down to the final needle, and I have already gone in through the end stitch and come back out through the second one. Now to finish it off, just go back around, come back up through the end stitch towards you. And that's it. Just remove the rest from the machine. This is what it looks like immediately off the machine. Now, this is where we would have released some needles. Typically, it will make a long stitch in through there. But that will work itself all back in. And what we normally do is give all of this several good sharp tugs. We're not only trying to even up the neckband seam itself, but we're also trying to pull the ribbing together. If you have a long knitting needle, you can run that through the hem, or if you have a long metal rod, but it's just a plain metal rod, I would guess maybe a quarter of an inch, possibly a little bit thicker than that. Okay, so now what I'm doing is threading the neckband onto that metal rod. And it's going right through the inside of the neckband. I think you can probably see a little bit of it there. The point of putting something through the hem, the neck hem, the neck band, is to give you something very firm to pull against. And that really helps set those ribbing stitches. This is what the neck band looks like after we've gotten it off the machine, run the rod through it, and pulled the ribbing stitches out. See how it curves so nicely? That's due in part to the tension control shaping. So that is something I would highly recommend you get used to doing, especially on neck bands. It really does help. This is the yoke completed to this point. I have not blocked this part of it, so it looks a little rough yet. This is immediately off the machine. This is what the inside looks like. This is the, the back stitch seam that we just did, and I want to show you how stretchy it is. So, that really is a pretty good technique to learn. I know it's a little slower than binding off with a latch tool, but you have a much stretchier neck bend, and I think you're really going to like this one.